Well, let's see now. The, you don't have to move. I mean, you don't have to move. Stay as you are. Okay? And uh, now I'm going to ask you about the solutions that you offered. And you have to give me the proper explanation for this. For example, which solutions do you propose? Yeah. Take, uh, taking no infrastructure student, the, the level that they have, the age, is different. Adapt the material. Adapt the materials and adapt even the book or, what, or the, all the, what you have to use and uh, try to, to cope for the diversity and for the level of your, your students. Adapt. Prepare all the things beforehand. Adapt. Okay, we have to adapt materials. You said the, the textbook. One of the fails that we do is that we work with textbooks. And uh, textbooks should be part of our teaching materials, not the, the teaching material itself. Now I'm dealing with two possible situations here. You as teachers of English and you as teachers of the non-linguistic subjects. When you use a textbook for non-linguistic subjects, you cannot try to follow the whole book because you don't have the time to do that. It is absolutely frustrating for them, for you, and for everyone. So you have to adapt and create your own materials. That is a very good uh, response. Try to relax, relax, and prepare the best materials that you can for these kids. And maybe the first year that you do that, you get a bunch of materials that, are, that is good. Then you keep these materials, and next year, you will keep on improving them. You will have in your computer these folders with all the images, with all the information, and then you will have the real folder with touchable material that you can give to your kids. And that's good. But that's a good option. And now, my friend. Uh, to plan open and flexible activities to reach all the levels in the class. Okay, open and flexible activities. That sounds very for the oppositioners also. So I'm going to prepare there are some open and flexible activities. Okay, what is open and flexible activities? Open and flexible is that I'm going to be happy with any of the results that I get, okay? Because maybe one of the kids is able to say all these beautiful things because of his memory. He learns everything by heart. He doesn't have anything, any problems in saying things in English. At home, he watches cartoons in English, and everything is so happy. But then I have these other kids who made a big effort just to say three or four words. So I have to be flexible. That means to be flexible. And being flexible means that I have to appreciate in both cases what they do. It doesn't matter if what they did had a, a, a deep difference or a big difference between one and the other. Our colleagues here. Uh, I don't know if it's correct, but uh, we have uh, written a uh, promote the same gene between the students of Spanish and English country. Okay. And how will you promote? Thank you. Your name? Amanda, how will you promote these exchanges with the English students? You're now dealing with students who are seven, eight years old. And you're going to make these exchanges. How? Amanda? Time. With e-twinning, e-twinning, that's an option. Okay, how many of you work with e-twinning? How many of you work with e-twinning? No way, Jose. We all know e-twinning, but only you work with e-twinning. Now you have to go back and reflect and keep on working and keep on learning and keep on using these things. Number one. Number two, something easier. What do you think is something easier for that? Okay, do you know schools in England? Yeah, yeah you know. Okay, you can exchange letters. The traditional letters, traditional, not emails, but it's low, it's low. Yeah, yeah, but you can, you can use the, the postcards. Postcards, that's nice. That's, I mean, they will get the postcards from Brighton, and then they will take this home, and they will share this with family. You want them to go home and keep on singing the songs that you give them, and you want them to bring this home, and they will be happy to do that. But there are some other ways which are a bit easier. For example, ICTs. I mean, I can do Skype with a colleague in England, and we can share experiences with them. I open another window. I may have three windows here, and then I will open the fourth window to this class in which I have my other colleague there with the classroom. They will say hello. They will say what they did this morning. They will talk about the weather. They will say about the experiences of the summer in Granada or in Malaga or in Cordoba or in Cuenca or beautiful places that they should visit when they come to Cuenca. 
Very simple, short sentences, and so on. And which other things do we have? Any other options that we have? As a government from Andalusia and Toledo, we propose to set at least two hours per week to for, for teachers can organize their tasks, um, prepare projects, because we haven't got any time. So at least two hours. Okay, but that's for the and, for and the union. That's for the TV union for the TV union. Yeah, that's for the TV union. That's yours? Or uh, we think that that's, uh, we can use uh, visual support for language in all the levels. And visual support? Yeah. Digital, oh, yeah. Digital Boards, oh, yeah. And it's very important to provide all the school with a good Wi-Fi, computers, and ICT tools. Because sometimes we have a building that has a Wi-Fi and another building that has... I don't know. So, what I will do is to bring the politicians to school and tell them, okay, now your son or daughter is not going to be in a private school or is going to be sent to Ireland. No. He or she is going to come here without Wi-Fi, without all these things. But... Digital boards, people use digital boards, but you have to know how to use that, okay? There are many other apps that you can use. There are websites where, from where you can download applications to work with the digital boards. It is not a matter of using a digital board as a PowerPoint presentation, as many people do. It is not, I mean, you don't need that. That's lots of money to use that. You can, any of the things that you write, that you do in the digital board can be sent via email to your kids. You can upload that information to your own blog and they will have the support at home. The kids that do not have the private academy, those who don't have the money to get a private teacher that we should always try to avoid, always in any case, because if you are a teacher, you are the teacher, we don't need another teacher. When you pay for a plumber, you don't pay for another plumber later, so we should do the same. We should fight for being the unique teacher, the only teacher, and that's it. And if we need to give more support, maybe we have to work harder on different situations. But these are the digital boards. I mean, I had a, a project with the European Union on digital boards, and that was excellent. But we have to change the mind here, and we have to learn how to use the digital board. So learn how to use and how to get the best of that. Because if not, you will feel, again, frustrated. You have a very nice tool there that is off. And many people in many schools have a nice tool there that is off. And that is terrible. It's a, I know, I know, absolutely true, absolutely true. So what I ask you is to write a letter to the newspaper. Yeah, write a letter to the newspaper. Newspapers love these things. A teacher from Cuenca is saying how bad or how hard it is teaching in, say this. I mean, if not, go to the teaching unions and say that you cannot teach like this. Or write a letter to the, to the not a letter, an article to the newspaper saying that how much money you've spent on ICTs and the reality says this. You have to do that. You. Not someone from university who never goes to school. You have to do that. Okay. Who else? I think uh, Realia. Realia is quite good for the students. Okay. Uh, for example, um, flex. Okay. Or, uh, that's very oppositionist also, this of Realia. So, I mean, if you, sell, if you tell your, your colleague, I mean, you're having a coffee, you say, okay, use Realia, he will say, okay, I want some other things. Because Realia is something that we all use as much as we can. So we always have the tickets, we have the, the real things that kids love seeing. Okay? But now, I mean, maybe Realia was more back in the 80s, 90s, where people could not go abroad. But now, I mean, they are six years old and they've been to Disney twice. And they are watching television and they are, have the internet and they can see and get all the information that they need. So they're not surprised, really surprised with some of the things. Um, uh, we could work on projects. Oh, right. I like that. Okay. Noelia, how many projects will you use in a year? 
you, you're, you're talking to your colleague. You say, work on projects. And then I'm your colleague and say, how will I work on projects? What is that? I will tell you. OK, can I? OK, no idea. Well, projects or tasks, any difference? People do not see the difference between one and the other. Projects or tasks? A project is longer. Yeah. If one is longer, the other one is shorter. <laughs> so a project is longer. That's right. It is longer. But that is something that is not properly seen by people. And that is the key. You can work on tasks. And that is very posh now. People love working on tasks and projects. But the difference is that maybe, and, and to include these kids, tasks is the best thing. Because you're going to have them in groups. They will feel part of the group. They will be taking care only of the presentation because they cannot do all the things. But they are part of this, of the success of this presentation. They will be putting this into the slides in the PowerPoint presentation. Or they will take care of the organization of the poster or the Glockster that they're going to prepare. That's it. And maybe their presentation in, in English is not very long because they are very shy, even though their English is good. But they cannot speak in public. There are people who hate speaking in public. So if you bring them and you provoke them using their English, English in public, or if any other would smile or laugh or whatever, you will destroy that kid. So give them the proper responsibilities. Tasks for the units, projects for the term, or for the whole year. That's it. And that's one of the good things to work on. A task, why? Because you tell them at the beginning what you expect from them. And then all of them, it doesn't matter the level that they have, will know exactly what they have to do. They will all be part of a project, of a, a task that they have to do by the end of the session, of the unit, sorry, or of the project, of the term. Any ideas for the project? Primary education, second level. School is in uh, Jaén. Where are you from? <laughs> School is in Jaén. So the project is going to be about olive trees, olive oil. You don't work in Jaén, but you are, but you are from Jaén. Where are in Jaén? In Jaén, the capital city, or? In Amuñeca. Where? Well, in Amuñeca. Any projects for Amuñeca? Because for Jaén, we have many with the olive oil. I mean, if I'm from Huelma, I will show people how good the olive oil in Huelma is, and we will do a presentation, and we will upload that in the school uh, website. And I mean, you can do many things as a task or as a project. So that's a good, a very good idea. Let's see what I have here. Involve students uh, so as to make them participate in the context, taking into account their emotional and personal characteristics, taking into account previous knowledge, interests, motivations, expectations, and experiences. Uh, we have said using visual and Visual and gestures. Okay. Visual and gestures. Okay, any others? And then I will give you the options from Murcia. Try to set tasks which involve logical exercises. Set tasks which involve logical exercises, lot of thinking, and not immediate answers to make communication. <laughs> Why, why don't we need these immediate answers? Because we need time to think. And we have to give the kids this time to think. Especially to these kids who need extra time for anything. I hate teachers when they do this. Okay, tell me, two times two is, and then she says four. Four, that's right. And then she has the answer. But she didn't have the time to say that. And sometimes we do that. Sometimes we always have the same volunteers. Always the same volunteers. That's why they say that brainstorming is not sometimes a very good uh, activity, because you always have the same kids giving the ideas. When you do brainstorming, always the same kids will give you their proper uh, ideas or their ideas. I like this of tasks and projects, could go together, could work together, and then you need the tools. Uh, constant use of second language from the very beginning preschool learning. Okay, good. For example, through repetitions. 
I mean, when I do that, I'm going to say this. How do you call that? That's right. That's right. Drills. Drills is very traditional. But traditional is good also. Now, people want only modern terms. What about dictations? What about tra uh, translations? Why not? But people want only the digital thing and the thing of uh, ICTs and all these things. And we have to give these options. And that is good. I mean, if I say every single morning, I say, well, how are you doing this morning? How are you doing this morning? How are you doing this morning? How is it going this morning? This is going to be the sentence that they will be listening every time that they come into my lessons. They will forget this of, hello, hi, how are you? Fine, thanks, and me too. That's the only thing they know. They don't even know how to say, how are you? And the answer of, uh, I don't know, any other answer. So, so, not bad. You have to give them these options using those strategies. Any other? Oh, wow. Reuse constantly specific vocabulary of every subject for the students to be able to retrieve it immediately. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's good. I mean, the use of vocabulary and recycling the vocabulary is key. If not, they will forget that. And we call that, in terms of, it is nice now, we call that, in terms of, uh, what are you doing? Turn it off? Turn it on. No, it's not cold. And, uh, well, the use of this vocabulary is, is essential because if they forget what they learn, they will feel bad. Families will feel bad. You will feel bad. So the idea is tasks. They will have to use this with other kids for extra times, for extra periods of time, and that's going to be good. So that's good. Good. Good, good thing. Any others? And then we finish. The, the use of mental organizers. Like Venn diagrams, some of these posters, uh, grids. Things that help them acquire and not only learn by heart things, okay? That's good. I mean, they will link what they learned with something that they saw. And they will see especially where that can be used, okay? And to develop some kind of project as a final task to share with the rest of the, of the class. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's the idea. Any other idea just to finish? Uh, use uh, methodological and organizative uh, resources in order to attain diversity. For example, uh, organizative, using two teachers, using a support teacher in the classroom that can help you with, okay. with special okay. needs. That's okay. Ideas that we should work and talk also to the teaching unions and see how to cope with this. We are working with 25 kids. We don't have any help? We don't have any help at all. If we have any help with these kids of special situations, these other teachers do not speak English, and they're not required to speak English, so it's going to be hard for us. So that's good. Maybe we should come to 30 students have two teachers? Why not? An assistant teacher? Why not? Maybe we should have this vocational training, formación profesional, focus on assistant teachers? Why not? Why not? Yeah, they would, they would get less money. That's okay. But they're going to have a job, they're going to help people, they're going to help you, and they will take care of other groups while you're doing other things. Well, the options given by Murcia are the following. Cooperative work, flexible groupings, oral presentations, tasks and projects, extra and complementary activities, and reading in non-linguistic subjects. So these are the options given in Murcia for primary education. I think that we uh, hit three out of five here. And for secondary education, they propose ICTs, oral expressions, portfolio, communicative tasks, and groupings. So I think that we all agree, more or less. So the thing is only to put this into practice. And it is good that one autonomous community is given the proper advice to the teachers who have to work and face difficult situations in primary education. Well, here I want you to, I'm going to rush this because I will get out of time. Well, this was only to tell you that to make you think, I don't want this to be theoretical, but sometimes, sometimes we have to go back to theory and think if from the proposal that this guy gives, we use these, these verbs. 
Let's see if we use these verbs in our teaching daily. For example, if we tell them to assemble, construct, create, design, develop, formulate, write. That's lovely. But that means tasks. When you tell them to assemble, construct, create, you forget about the traditional teaching with the pen and the paper. Assemble is different. Construct is different. That's a task, a project. You give them the tools, they will have to build that. That's entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship in primary education is not that you're going to create El Corte Inglés. That's not emprendimiento for what? For a business. I'm seven years old, man. So, entrepreneurship, you have to work on entrepreneurship on the basis of I'm going to give them the responsibility of being the leaders of the group and I'm going to teach them that they will have to accept the opinions of others and not always giving theirs as a unit. That's entrepreneurship. Then verbs like this should be in our vocab vocabulary every single day. For example, these of argue, defend, judge, select, support, value, evaluate. This is really hard, but we're going to give them exercises, which are sometimes tough even for us in Spanish. When they have to describe something, give your opinion about something. I mean, you have to give them the proper tools to give opinion. How do I give opinion? have to know how to express that. How? Again, through functions. You have to work on functions. It doesn't matter, but especially with these kids, because they need to know that, in my opinion, first, second, then, after that, that's going to appear like this. So they feel that they know how to link ideas. Then ideas will appear. But they know, they feel confident when using those things. Okay? Then when they say this in Murcia of oral expression, they mean that. I mean, giving them the options, the tools, to express orally, which is difficult. It's not very easy. So verbs like choose, demonstrate, dramatize, uh, classify, describe, define, duplicate are verbs that should be always the best. See this guy? This is Vygotsky. You know Vygotsky? Because of the oppositiones and Vygotsky is like, I don't know, like Garner and Krashen and all these guys. Uh, Daniel Madrid and all the people that we all know. So you go to bed and you say, bye, Vygotsky, and bye. Well, it's the same. Well, Vygotsky said this of taking special care, special care, being special with the kid. Not with the special kids, no. You being special with the kid. See how this mother talks to, his, to her son and how she even has to breathe in depth and, and not to jump and say, that's enough. And at the end, she gets what she wants. This is what they call the zone of prosmo. I don't care about that. I mean, I'm not going to go through the oppositions again. But I want to see that. And I want to bear these things in mind. I don't need to know that Vygotsky is the guy of this or Garner is the guy of, of that. I don't need that. Only if I'm going to write a paper or only if I want to uh, go to the library and find a paper about someone. It is taking care of these things. I hope that we can listen to this.
So what do you think of the video? I don't want it to be simply a video in a course, in a training course in the summer. And I think it is a video that teaches us a lot. For example, patience. We have to be patient, number one. We have to be patient. We are patient now. You are patient, but then you have to spread the news, as Frank Sinatra. Okay? So maybe you have to give this advice to your friends, with your mate, when you have a coffee. Say, okay, just start being patient. If you're patient, they will be patient. Number one. Number two, some of the verbs that we saw before, the mother uses some of those. Touch them. When he tries to count them, he messes it around. I mean, he cannot count, and he does one, two, and then eight. Or he says one, two, three, and then, or he gets the red things, and then the red cones, and then the blue then, and then she tells her to start again, and then when he touches that, he can count correctly. And the best of all is that when he does it, his mother is not happy enough. She wants him to do it again, to make sure that he learned. And then she says that he cannot do it again. So she keeps on working, and then at the end, he does it again. That's good. But the best thing is that when he finishes, he wants to start with the blue thing. He feels motivated. He feels happy. He feels secure. He feels that he can do those things. So that's what we have to do. We all need that. We all need care and love. And that's it. And if we don't give that care and love, it's going to be hard. And we are going to create, we, we, and especially those who are not here today, are going to create bad students with a bad attitude because they will not feel great at school. They will not feel happy because they feel that no one takes care of them. Because they feel that every time that the rest is going up and up and up and up in contents and, and all the things, they are going down and down and they are leaving the system. They are left behind. And we should use this from the American uh, uh, politics on education, this uh, like the law on education that they have, which is uh, no child left behind. And that is good. I mean, no child should be left behind. And that's something we should learn. Well, now we move into our classroom, to our school, and let's see it. That differentiation, which is a, a term that is, uh, sounds really strange, differentiation, has to do with these things. Goals, contents, materials, teaching methods, learning environments, assessment depending on a student's interest, readiness, abilities, motivation, and self-esteem. So that's for the oppositionists again. That's absolutely, I mean, I want to say how good teacher I am. And then I say, I'm going to consider differentiation in terms of goals. How do I consider differentiation in terms of goals? I have two options. One. The adaptation of the curriculum. If it is a meaningful, a significant adaptation of the curriculum, that's something that we have to do with other people. We have to bear in mind that we are not the teachers of PT. We are teachers of social science, natural science, or maths, or physical education, or English. But we are not the specialists on these things. We have to know what to adapt in our subjects and how to cope with this adaptation. Then I'm moving to this. And this is the school, and then I have some questions for you. The diversity, when I say diversity, I meant this morning a mixability class or group like this, cultural diversity. For example, the other day I was in a, in a master's panel with a, the, it was a presentation of a, a, it was a master's of Spanish as a foreign language, and the paper was about the use of uh, the movies of Almodovar uh, when teaching Spanish as a foreign language. So if you're going to be a teacher of Spanish as a foreign language in Arabia Saudi, you cannot use Armadol. That's for sure. So we have to adapt to our subject, to where we teach, and to the people that we have there. If you are going to teach here, you know that you, or I mean, I know that you are experts in this, and that you know this very well, and that you know how to cope, that you have expectations, and that sometimes you get frustrated, as I do, and as we all do in this job. But when you teach kids, you have to think for them. You have to think what they think. You have to see their faces. Because sometimes they will not tell you. Most of the times they will not tell you. Okay, so these are the things that we are going to cope with. Students with special needs, which is hard, and latecomers. We know what latecomers are? Latecomers, yes? Should I ask? No, I will say. Latecomers, these kids that come from, maybe on a boat, a small boat, coming from Morocco or any other countries, or these kids that go from, for example, they go to the olive picking season, and they go with the parents, and then they come to Jaén from November to February, and then they move to Huelva for the strawberry picking season, and then for the asparagus in uh, Huatortajar, and then they go from one place to another. You have to know how to make this 
kids feel part of the group and so on. So we move into the school, and now I have another task for you, okay? We're going to hand this out. Okay, what are we going to do with this? These are some questions that I... Please. I think it is easier if we, if we move now and we... Please. Can you, can, you, can you stand up and hand it out? Which is much easier? No, 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 no. Stand up and... Ah, uh, that's right. But then, give it to me. It's going to be much easier. Yeah. Because we don't have much time. Okay, we have here 30 questions. And the 30 questions that you should bring to your head teacher and to the and to the staff at your school and uh, consider if we are working properly. And if we're working properly means if we know what we're supposed to do and if we're doing it. So here we have these 30 questions and you're going to, this is personal, this is individual. You're thinking of your school. And then you, you read number one. We include in the CLIL program students with special characteristics. And you say, yes, always, 10. Not always. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe no one told me. Six, seven, OK? So for each of the questions, you're going to point them from one to 10, OK? Very easy, very quick. And in three minutes, we're finished. If you're not working in a bilingual school, now maybe you were before and you can think of that school, okay? So make things easy.
In question 29, you have CPD, which is continuous personal development, formación continua. In-service training or continuous personal development or professional development. 